of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Where is the love? When will it all end? As if the threat of terrorism, gang violence, sex trafficking, drug abuse, immorality, greed, big government, big pharmacy, food shortages, famine, hoarding, poverty, and global warming weren't enough. Now and we are and have been dealing with the continued warnings that the coronavirus is going to flare up again and that social distancing and mask wearing are the new normal. But to be honest, with things that have been happening very near here for the last week or so, these last few months of sanitizing and hand washing and social distancing may not seem so bad. 
especially when just north of us in Minnesota, in Minneapolis of all places, there are riots, looting, and lives being lost due to police brutality and bigotry, a lack of love that has led to violence, racial tensions, killing and abuse that is causing fear, anger, and frustration all around us. And we dare not think that this won't strike closer to home. It's just a matter of time. It seems that day by day, the world is getting more chaotic, more immoral, more violent, and more confusing, as a lack of love for God and our neighbor seems to predominate. So we might ask, where is this coming from and what are we to do? Remember the words of our Lord to his disciples before he was leaving them to be crucified. He said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Just think of it. If we could love our Lord and God with our whole heart, mind, body, and soul as we are called to do, And if we could love our neighbor as ourselves, as our Lord tells us to do, think of what a different place this world could be. If we love Jesus, God himself, creator of heaven and earth, will come to us and make his dwelling with us. And indeed, these words should bring us joy in our hearts. That is, until we hear the rest of what our Lord has to say, because he continued warning Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And dear Christians, much of the violence, anger, fear, and frustration in this world and in our hearts is a result of not loving Jesus or keeping his word. In other words, as more people are falling away from the church, don't know the word of God, don't even know the Ten Commandments any longer, or have any knowledge of what Jesus did in going to the cross to fulfill the law for us, there is no fear or love of God, no fear of his judgment, nor any love for what Jesus has done for us and for the sins, or to pay for the sins of the whole world. And as a result of this lack of knowledge, as a lack of faith, and it produces a lack of love for God and for our neighbor, so that as this knowledge of God grows dim, the lack of love grows greater. And as love grows cold, it can only lead to more and more hatred, abuse, violence, and death in this world. Remember, our Lord tells his disciples, if If you love me, you'll keep my words and my Father will love you. Lord, have mercy. Do you understand that these words of our Lord can actually condemn us under the law? You see, it's easy to watch the news and see the violence and wonder how others can do such things, say such things, treat another human being with such animosity that they would kneel on their neck until they died or pull a trigger or push a button, or start a fire that burns down a building and destroys other people's property, or see them starve, or beat them in our homes, or speak unlovingly, or think unloving thoughts. Because killing is not just the act of hurting someone physically. Remember, each one of us are guilty every time we get angry, call someone an idiot, not even verbally, but from the heart. So Lord, have mercy upon us. John writes in his first epistle, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. St. Paul reminds us that no one is righteous. The prophet Isaiah warns that all we like sheep have gone astray, and that even our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And not only that, but each one of our acts of disobedience, again, even if only in our thoughts, show that we do not love God with our whole heart or keep his word with the perfection that his law demands. Remember, before the Lord, all our sins are like scarlet. Nothing is hidden. So if God's love is conditioned on our ability to keep his words, then we are in big trouble and we have much to fear from God the Father. Unfortunately, while many people live in fear of coronavirus, 
or police violence or abuse or poverty or illness, too many people live without the fear of God, which is far worse. Even we Christians can take our salvation for granted and forget that we too are to fear and love God because of his judgment. We who do not keep his word are called to obey his words and commands. We must be reminded, and the mirror of the law does that even when it hurts and makes us uncomfortable. But thanks be to God, if hearing the law and having to take a look at yourself in that mirror makes you ashamed, makes you feel uncomfortable, that is good because it shows that the Holy Spirit is at work in you. And the Holy Spirit brings you to faith and repentance and knowing what God has done for you through his Son and the Holy Spirit, that's what brings us to love our Father in heaven, his Son, our Lord, and give thanks and praise to the Holy Spirit for undeserved gifts that we have not earned or merited. Beloved, beware of preaching that leaves you thinking that you are capable of keeping the commandments perfectly or by your own strength come to love Jesus by your own reason or merit, or that God saved you or loves you because you loved him first or made the effort to come to him. You were dead in your trespasses, children of wrath, until God made you alive in Christ and gave you this gift as an inheritance through the preaching of the gospel which brings you the Holy Spirit because this is what we believe, teach, and confess. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, and kept me in the true faith. You see, if we truly believe what God's word has revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, we know that it cannot be my, by my own reason or strength. Because again, born dead in my trespasses, I cannot come to Jesus, I can't choose him, but from before the foundation of this world, he planned for my salvation, so that yes, in times of trouble, I need not fear, but cling to the cross and the gospel, the word of God that shows God's love for me, because Christ died for my salvation and yours and for the sins of the whole world, so that we would know that we can't do enough good works to please him. But having been called by the Holy Spirit, through the preaching of the gospel, you have been sanctified. You are his saints. That's what it means to be part of the communion of saints, the holy church. And you are justified, declared righteous, your sins having been taken away from you and your innocence before God, a certainty, all on account of Jesus. You see, the gospel declares that this is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring us to faith, forgiveness, and salvation. And yes, love for God's Son. It's only then, having been brought by the triune God himself to faith, which God the Father provides us through the Holy Spirit and the preaching of the word, that we are capable of loving Christ and pleasing God with our good works, which are love for our neighbor. And that, dear Christians, is the comfort that the Holy Spirit brings, that the Lord no longer sees us as estranged, but rather as his own children, adopted, so we can call out, Abba, Father, knowing that our Heavenly Father hears our prayers and he answers them because of his love for us. And also to come to this knowledge that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot hope to please God and would remain forever under his judgment. Because Jesus says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I have said to you. And he does this every time we hear the word of God read it in our homes, and ponder it in our hearts. Because we must always remember the work of the Holy Spirit is to remind us of the things of Christ and fill us with love for all that God has done for us so that, yes, we in our vocations would show love to our neighbors. And he does this by working through the scriptures that all point you to Jesus. That's his right and proper work to bring us faith through the saving word of the gospel, to teach us about the Son of God who died for the sins of the world, to work faith in us by bringing Christ to you. Remember, the apostles often claimed to have loved God, but they didn't truly believe his words or trust him when he said that he had to die so that he could be raised again. You see, that's the gospel. So many people pretend that the gospel is what you do for Jesus. They confuse law and gospel and lead 
people into all kinds of uncertainty and doubt and trust in their own good works. But handling the word of God correctly, we know that the Son of Man must be delivered up and raised again after three days And that the preaching of repentance and forgiveness is what you need to hear until that day when the Lord returns in glory. Because as St. Paul told the Corinthians, the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. You see, it's only from Christ's love for us that we're able to believe and obey the Father's will and abide in the Word, and as a result, love our neighbor, do good for him, and not harm him. And you cannot love Jesus without the Holy Spirit bringing you that love. And that means that you cannot hate your neighbor. Yes, we are to turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, even for people that at first we might not think are worthy of our love. But remember, we're not worthy of God's love either. You see, you cannot say that you love Christ and then disobey his word or hurt your neighbor. And that's why even though seven out of ten people in this nation claim to be Christian, in reality they aren't. You cannot be a Christian and not have a love for God's word. You cannot truly be a Christian if you refuse to hear, believe, and obey the words of Christ. Because Jesus told his disciples that Moses and the prophets, these are the scriptures that testify to me. So if you ignore the word, you ignore Jesus. If you despise the word, you despise the Father. If you reject the word, you reject the spirit who brings you that word and you invite damnation. And that's why we must... Remain diligent in hearing the word and coming to Bible study and church and praying, as St. Paul says, that the word of Christ would dwell in us richly. You see, our Lord's word is the very bread of life, eternal life itself. It's our food which sustains and brings us God's love and the comfort of the promise of God's forgiveness for our salvation in a very real and present way, even though our Lord has ascended into heaven because he is here where he promises to be for you. And this can't happen if you're not here. And that's why we're making the effort to have opportunities to gather as safely as possible, with as least risk as possible, to receive these gifts. Nothing less than the peace of God which the world cannot give. You see, and that's exactly why Jesus sends us a helper to be with us. Because he knows in our own sinful nation, we do not love the things of God. He knows that Satan is always there to tempt us to think that there are more important things that we need to be doing rather than spending our time in the word. He knows that Satan is always tempting us to believe that God is the author of evil, that all these bad things are happening in this world because God isn't keeping his end of the bargain. But we know, having heard the word of God, that this is not true. God leads no one into temptation. Rather, because of our sin, there is evil and violence in this world, a lack of love and much hate. But thanks be to God. This is why Jesus sends the Spirit to help us in our weaknesses, to encourage us and to inspire us to love, to hear the words of faith and salvation which Christ gives to us, even as we do struggle against the desires of our own flesh, our own fears and doubts. Because we know that we can't obey God's word Our flesh is too weak on our own. As Jesus said, though, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. So let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What precious words of God's unconditional promise for us. The word brings the peace of God, which is nothing less than the Father's promise that you receive the forgiveness of your sins in the waters of holy baptism and through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Jesus leaves us these words that we might have peace in the midst of disease and violence and the struggles, temptations, and cross-bearing of this world. He leaves us his peace, which leads us to love him for all that he has done for us. The peace which guards our hearts and minds and keeps us in Christ and his world, word until we depart this life in faith and believe in Christ's words. We need not fear death or disease, riots or violence because nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord because he has conquered death through his own death and resurrection. On that first Pentecost Sunday so long ago, St. Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, preached these words from the Spirit-inspired prophet Joel. He said, I will show wonders in the heavens above and 
signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And certainly these things are happening as we look around us. And yet, Joel and Peter weren't referring just to the violence of this world. They were preaching the same message that now saves you, the cross, that great and mighty sign from heaven, that the magnificent day of the Lord was when he hung upon the cross. The sky turned dark as the light of the world was snuffed out and put to death. And yet that light rose again so that the light of Christ would be preached into your hearts so that you would not be overcome with the darkness of this world. And the signs and wonders that are greater than moons and stars in the heaven are the gifts of God that he gives to you in the absolution that you hear and in the sacrament that you receive because Christ is with you. He gives you the gifts of God in this place as he places his name upon you so that we don't try to make a name for ourselves or construct our own religion as those who want to build their own tower to heaven, but rather trusting the good words of God and the sound doctrines that have been handed down to us. We joyfully receive God's name when it's placed upon us in the waters of baptism, and we gratefully stretch out our hands to receive the very body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Gifts and wonders far greater than anything that man can produce because these come from God to bring you the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding and the faith that the Holy Spirit brings to you through the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, amen. Please rise. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Watching the Divine Service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 10.30. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.